Hey guys, it's Lord here, back again with another action figure review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Animaniacs Ultimates Wave 1, fingers crossed they make more of these, that is, Pinky from Pinky and the Brain, Pinky and the Brain, of course. This is brought to us by the fine folks over at Super Super 7, and I'm going to get this out of the way. We're going to be taking a look at all these Animaniacs Ultimates this week. And while they might not be perfect figures, they scratch an itch that I've needed scratched for several years now. I've wanted some really nice, not perfect, nice, Animaniacs figures for a while now, and Super 7 delivered wholeheartedly. So, without further ado, -do, let's cut right to the chase and get into the meat and taters of this review, and take a look at Pinky's accessories here, because he comes with a lot. Uh, first up... He comes with a NARF head, which is absolutely hilarious. He also comes with a freshly whacked on the head head. <laughs> That's be redundant or nothing. Probably by the brain. And of all the heads, this one's got the least uh, kind of mold degradation on it. It's usually around the ears and the jawline. This one's not too bad. This one's got it a little bit on this ear, and a little bit along the mouth there, and around the cheeks. Nothing on the nose, thankfully, on most of my Animaniacs figures, so that's good. Although that is just red paint, I could touch that up with the marker if I needed to. That said, shouldn't have to. Not for the price they retail for, anyways. As far as hands go, these are the pair of wide open hands. Like, what is up on that? Um, he comes with a pair of slightly less closed versions of the hands he's got on him. I will say, the hands are kind of loose on this guy in particular. I didn't really notice it with the other figures, but him, at least after I swapped things around for the Final Thoughts shot, the URL shot, seemed a little loose afterwards so maybe that's just mine or that's something that'll happen over time maybe hopefully it's not a widespread issue does have a couple of grip hands with the thumbs up like motu origins so uh if you're wondering if he holds stuff well enough I, you know he does for the most part he doesn't have too hard of a time holding his accessories he does have a more enclosed grip hand and a hand holding a pencil and this can only mean he comes with his little notepad so if you remember uh, pinky in the brain or animaniacs when they were just a segment on there he used to take notes what brain was telling him so they could take over the world uh, he does come with this piece of paper which is not a piece of paper it's a piece of hard plastic so snap that um, he does come with this grapple hook, grapple gun, that doesn't come out, but it does feel like it's softer, yeah, it's a softer material than the rest of it. He comes with this kind of test tube flask on a Bunsen burner type setup here, reminds me of high school, back when I used to watch this show on the regular. He does come with a couple more flasks with some stuff coming out of them. Not quite sure what these could be used for. And last but not least, he comes with this crazy thing, which looks like an electrode of some kind. It's not articulated, I don't think. Uh, it doesn't move. It's a solid piece. This is clear. It doesn't light up or anything, but very nice. It looks cool. I dig it. So you get some cool little Dio accessories, so that's always nice. Now, as far as the figure itself is concerned, those of you who don't know, good old Pinky here was voiced by Rob Paulson, who was a rock star as far as uh, voice acting fame goes. Uh, he actually battled throat cancer in the past decade or so, and uh, while he was in the hospital, his co-star, the brain himself, Maurice Lamarck, used to visit him, and they used to do Pinky and the Brain... Uh, interactions 
while uh, he was getting his treatment. So that's pretty freaking cool, uh, considering the fact that my uh, mother passed away from uh, stage four, is it? Brain cancer, that kind of hits close to home for me personally, but uh, I just thought that was something cool to share, so uh, there you go. But this figure looks just like he stepped out of the freaking show. And based off how big he is in my hand, he is like one-to-one -one scale. So that's pretty fun. You can have a legit life-size pinky in the brain running around your house. Uh, that said, as far as articulation goes, his head is on a ball joint. You can look down all the way, look up all the way, tilt, and rotate. And for those of you who are all, ball joints are no good without a disc hinge, you're stupid. Because this guy gets incredible range, and he's got a massive head. No pun intended. Shoulders go out to the side pretty far, a little bit past 90. Back down, he does rotate there. Does have a hinge in the elbow with rotation. He does have a swivel in the wrist, but it's very floppy all of a sudden. I think after swapping the hands, I might have loosened it a bit. Hopefully that goes back to normal. He does have a hinge as well on both sides this one's significantly tighter than the other one it is what it is these aren't perfect figures as i mentioned before he's got a ball joint in the waist which is kind of loose but if you pop the head off it's not loose so uh you know that's probably why it's loose this is big head that said if you really wanted to monkey around with this figure You'd probably heat him up pop him apart i be careful when doing that maybe stick something in there or some adhesive and that'll tighten it up it's not floppy i mean his lower torso isn't flopping around all over the place but you know it is a little loose just a little bit same with his tail his tail's on a ball joint but it is a little loose now his hips nice and tight nice tight hips they kick out Back down. They don't kick out very far. Kick out about that far. They kick forward and back. He's got a swivel in the knee with a hinge. Gets you about 90, so that's impressive. And then he has a swivel in the foot with a rocker. Not a rocker, excuse me. Swivel in the foot with a hinge, but no rocker. Based off his foot design, I could probably see them fitting one in there, but. They picked aesthetic over articulation. And in this case, I don't mind because I can stand him. Even though I'm not a fan of that ankle articulation at all. Um, he's not difficult to stand. If he was difficult to stand because of that, I would have a little bit more beef with it. But as it stands, no pun intended, uh, it's okay. It works. He's a bit of a backwards lean there, so. Trying to get him to stand. Can be easier said than done. And because this figure is a little bit wacky as far as scale goes, we're just going to bring in our two regulars for right now. We'll bring them back out during the Brains review. Don't worry, I'm not, not going to show the pair off together. That's just how stupid do you think I am. So there's the Mythic Legion's Brother Mandibulus and the infamous UK11 Spawn. As you can see, he is uh, quite large. <laughs> so he's not going to scale well with the rest of your stuff, unfortunately. But, um, you know, he works within his own scale, and that's all that matters. So with that being said, it's time now that we wrap things up. Some final thoughts. Overall, and I'm just going to get all this out of the way while we're taking a look at good old Pinky here before we continue with the Animaniacs a thon this week, because we're going to be taking a look at this entire wave of Animaniacs Ultimates from the fine folks over at Super 7. These are not perfect figures, but I wanted a set of Animaniacs figures that were relatively consistent, maybe not exactly to scale with one another, because let's face it, if Pinky and the Brain were to scale with the Warner Brothers and Sister, uh, they'd be microscopic, and that's no fun. So... Given the fact that what the fine folks over at Super 7 had to work with and that these are 
cartoon characters that are not proportioned like, you know, your average Joe, superhero, Joe Schmoes and whatnot. I think they did a pretty good job. Are they perfect? No. Are they good enough for me? Absolutely. freaking lutely I love these figures and all their shortcomings aside. It's a set of Animaniacs figures that's really well done. They look like the characters. They feel really solid in hand. There's some looseness here and there, I'm not gonna lie. And there's some quality control issues in regards to scuffing and whatnot here and there, I'm not gonna lie. But, for the price point of what they are going for now, which is a little bit closer to 30 bucks, I don't think you can go wrong with these guys. I think these are fun figures. If you like Animaniacs like I do, this is a definite must-have set. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Pinky here, like the brain, probably one of my favorites out of the whole set, despite his shortcomings. So stay tuned for the brain review later today. And until next time, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll catch you guys later.